I just kegged cider number two. This is a pineapple cider, a sweet pineapple cider, along with the regular pineapple cider, a batch of Skeeter pea, and a hydromel that I have yet to make. That's going to compose my summer drinking, preparing me for a nice, hot summer Texas. But that got me to thinking, all of this cider, cider doesn't really seem to get the appreciation that it deserves. Cider has played a very important part of American history, all the way from the colonial period up to the late 19th century, and then it kind of faded into obscurity. So, in homage to cider, in this episode of Mead with Eric and Derek, we're going to explore cider in American history. Cider played a big part in the earliest days of our country. Now, I cannot attest to the validity of the story, but legend has it that the Mayflower was beset by a deadly storm, and the ship was damaged, almost crippled by the storm. One of its beams had cracked and broken. Now, the crew were going to turn back, but they were able to fashion a brace out of a long iron screw from an apple press, which fixed the beam just long enough for them to get to the new world. Now, as I said, I'm not sure how true that story is, but it's a beautiful legend. And if you can believe that, then that means that cider played a very, very important part in the establishment of these United States. The settlers wasted no time getting to farming and agriculture. They planted fruit trees and wheat fields. And while their apple trees flourished, their wheat fields struggled. And so cider became the premier beverage, the beverage of choice for the settlers. You see, back in those days, water wasn't generally safe to drink. It contained lots of bacteria, it was very unclean. People got very sick and died from drinking water. And it just so happened that a fermented beverage was much safer to drink than water. And because the colonists had such ease in growing apple trees and such difficulty planting wheat fields, cider became ever popular. It was served in every home. It was on every table. A low alcohol version called Ciderkin was even served to children. There's stories of babies getting baptized in cider, and even John Adams himself was said to drink a tankard every day, and he said of the beverage, it is a fine breakfast drink. As America went west, so did cider. Have you heard of John Chapman? More commonly known as Johnny Appleseed. Now, legend would have you believe that Johnny Appleseed was a do-gooder. He planted apple trees solely motivated by his love for the fruit, but sadly, that is not the case. Johnny Appleseed was a prospector and a savvy businessman. He would buy land, he'd buy orchards and nurseries, and he'd sell these to pioneers for quite a profit. The trees that Johnny Appleseed planted were grown from seed, which didn't usually yield uh, an apple suitable for eating but almost always yielded apples suitable for cider making, which is just as well. Because back in those days, an apple was far more likely to be pressed into cider than eaten as a snack. It was towards the end of the 19th century, the late 1800s, when cider began its decline. A large contributor were the immigrants from Germany and the Eastern Europeans. They brought with them their love of beer. And in the Midwest, land was much better suited for growing wheat and barley than apple trees. Furthermore, beer was much easier to produce on a large scale. It was more suited to serving the fast-growing American cities. Cider became a beverage of the country, while beer flowed through the cities. As beer gained in popularity and cider declined in popularity, the final nail in the coffin was prohibition. When all forms of alcohol were outlawed, so was cider, and even pressing apples in the juice was frowned upon. These were the days when Applejack rose to prominence. But that's a story for another day. While patriotic prohibitionists put many apple trees to the torch, beer manufacturers were able to adjust their business model to produce sodas instead of beer. And by the time prohibition had ended, cider had faded out of existence. The soda manufacturers who survived fruit prohibition were able to adjust their business model back to beer making. So once again, beer flowed through every pub, every tavern, and every bar in every city in America, while cider was little more than a memory. Until today, in these wonderful modern times, cider has seen a resurgence. Everyone's drinking cider, everyone's making cider, everyone's loving it. Now, you may have noticed that at no point in this video did I ever say the words hard cider. 
Now, I'm American by choice, and I love my country. But sadly, this is one thing that we, as Americans, have got wrong. The term hard cider doesn't exist. Cider, by definition, is alcoholic. In this respect, cider is very, very similar to wine. Nobody would ever say hard wine, because wine, by definition, is alcoholic. The liquid that falls from the grape is grape juice. If you ferment the grape juice, it becomes wine. Same with apples. The liquid that falls from the apple is called apple juice. If you ferment the juice, it is called cider. I'm not really sure how, where, or when this misconception began, but here in America today, you can buy apple juice, you can buy apple cider, you can buy mulled apple cider, hard apple cider, and none of it is correct. If you ferment apple juice, it becomes apple cider. Apple cider that has not been fermented is called apple juice. It doesn't matter if you mull it, it doesn't matter if you spice it, it doesn't matter if it's cloudy, it doesn't matter if you pasteurize it. If it comes from an apple and it's fermented, it's cider. If it comes from an apple and it's not fermented, it's juice. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed researching it. Thank you.